from the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater brings you Judy Garland and John Hodiak in The Clock. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A popular magazine now on the stands describes New York as one city in America where dreams come true where the fabulous and the improbable are ever-present. An example is a clipping which I have here. It reports that as a result of seeing Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer scream success, the clock, scores of servicemen are riding up and down escalators in the Pennsylvania station looking for romance. The reason they give is, well, that's how a soldier met Judy Garland in the picture. In tonight's uh, radio theater version of the clock, we show you how it happened. And we bring you Judy Garland playing her original screen role, co-starred with John Hodiak. The clock is the tender story of a boy and girl who meet in the heart of a teeming and relentless city. It's time now for the first act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. <laughs> Department of Overwhelming Statistics. Subject, New York City. There are five boroughs in New York. Population, 7,454,995. So many people. Too many people, you might say. Almost too many people. The above population lives in an area of 299.0 square miles. No place for a stranger in New York. Too big. And everybody hurry and just rush, rush, rush. Trains and ferries, buses and taxi cabs, subways and L's. Who are they all? What are they doing? What do they want? It's Sunday morning, a spring morning, and in New York's Pennsylvania station, a young soldier gazes in awe at the swirling, bumping crowd that mill about him. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. Yeah? Uh, could you tell me how to get out of this place? Uh, just use that escalator, Corporal. Oh, well, where does that take you? 7th Avenue, in from camp, huh? That's right. Well, you like it here. Oh, well, what are some of the things to see? What do you think would be good on a Sunday? Well, guys, I don't know. I work here, but I live in Jersey. First time in 11 years I've been here on Sunday. But you'll find plenty to keep you busy. Goodbye. Thanks. Oh, say, where can... Oh! Oh! Oh, I guess I didn't look where I was going. No, I guess you didn't. <laughs> well, are you going up, soldier, or aren't you? Young man, do you mind if I use the escalator? Oh, hey, I, I, I mister! Soldier! Uh, my heel! Who? My me? heel! Me? No, 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 behind you, my heel! I'll, I'll be right up. Wait for me. What? Oh, Taxi cab. What's the matter with your foot? Sprain your ankle? No, no, no. Oh, I... look, you want to stay off that foot. But... If you twisted it, I'll see what I... But I didn't twist it. Well, I better take a look at it. Hey, the heel's off your shoe. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go down and find it for you. What, in that crowd? Oh, I'll find it. What was it, just a little heel? Yes, but that's all right. Oh, no, 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 I'll find it all right. I'll be right back. How does your shoe feel now? Are you sure he fixed it all right? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I never thought a shoe repair shop would be open on Sunday. Well, I go that way. Thank you for carrying my bag. Oh, that's all right. Oh, uh... Do you mind if I go a little way with you, sort of look around? Uh, no. Not if you want to. Thank you. I get a bus, uh, I get a bus on Fifth Avenue. A uh, bus, huh? <laughs> oh. Uh. What's the matter? Buildings. I've never seen buildings like that in my life. And wherever you look. Well, look, if I'm going to catch my bus, maybe uh, I... I'm sorry. Let's go. I guess I've got a nerve, all right, getting on the bus with you. Well, it's one way to see the city. And this is the first time I ever rode on a double-decker bus. Sure nice in the open like this. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Too breezy up here? Oh, no, no. Hey, there goes your handkerchief. Uh, well, this is certainly my day to lose things. <laughs> here, come on. Thank you. <clears throat> this, this city must seem very strange to you. I'm green as grass. I suppose you've lived here all your life. No, just three years. Folks here? No. 
There's uh, Radio City up ahead. You mean you live all alone? No. Uh, look, there's St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, you're not married, are you? No, I live with another girl. Oh. Well, uh, what do you do, if you don't mind my asking? I'm a secretary. Oh, I see. What kind of an office do you work in? Just an office. Uh, I guess I'm pretty nosy. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You're not catching cold. Oh, no, no. It's, it's the sun. It always does this to me. I sneeze exactly twice, and then I'm all through. Oh. Here, here's your handkerchief. Well, hadn't you better keep it? No, no, I'm all finished. Uh, look, don't you think you'd better get off here soon? Well, I didn't have anywhere to go, but if I bothered you... Oh, no, no, of course. I mean that. You don't bother me. You sure? Sure. I, I just meant that this bus only goes as far as the park. They got a park here with trees and grass? Yes, I think you'd enjoy it. There's a lake and a, a children's well, zoo. You wouldn't care to walk just a little with me in the park, no, would you? No, that's out of the question. I've got to get home. You see, I've been in the country and I... I uh, 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 oh, oh, where, where is it? Here. Thank you. <laughs> I never get tired of watching the seals. They're such comedians. Did you ever think how much some animals remind you of people? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Now, you take that seal there. I've got an ant in Minnesota that looks just like that. They used to tell me I looked exactly like an owl. Oh, that's ridiculous. You don't... You do. You look exactly like an owl. Exactly. See, uh, what is it you remind me of? Never mind. I don't want to know. Hey, look at that. What? Kid with a sailboat. Kids are a great study when you get to know them. Yeah. Hiya, Skipper. Way off, mister. Let's see. Three masts, huh? Oh, say, will you look get at that? Get your big mitts off my boat. Oh. Who do you think you are? I don't get it. Kids usually like me. What a rude little boy. They hardly ever kick me in the shins. I don't understand. Well, Joe, I've really got to go home. Oh, yeah. Well, goodbye, Alice. Goodbye? Uh, what, what are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. Uh, over there, that's 79th Street, huh? Mm-hmm. The museum's over there. Museum, huh? Uh-huh. Well, that's an idea. Well, you know, I've, um only been there once or twice myself. It's a shame. I, I ought to go there more often. Really? Museum, huh? <laughs> well, I'll show you where it is. I've got time for that, I suppose. Come on. On the year 1411, 1375 B.C., or during the 18th dynasty, you will notice... We could go up and see the paintings, Joe. How are your feet doing? They know they've been walking. Well, let's just lean against here for a while. All right. Look, there's Rodan's thinker. Yeah, I've been thinking, too. What? How lucky I am. Oh. Uh, well, I, I was I'm... also thinking I could never get used to this city. No, this isn't what I want. What do you want? Oh, a little business of my own out home in Mapleton. Why? Because it's my home. Not that I don't want to get around and see things, but I get to thinking sometimes. Like in the spring, in the evening. I can almost smell the grass outside the house. Dad used to mow the lawn before dinner. He'd never let us kids do it. Did you have a dog? Dog? No. Did you? No. Well, why'd you ask that? I, I just wondered. <laughs> no, I didn't have a dog. After the war, I'm going to be a builder. Well, you mean a contractor? Well, more like a carpenter. I want to put up houses myself. Well, they say houses are all going to be alike, made out of plastic soon. Not in Mapleton, they won't. Why do you want to be a contractor, Joe, or a carpenter? Oh, I like working with wood, I guess. I like the feel of it and building things with my own hands. You know what I mean? Yes, I do, I think. <laughs> What's that, the closing bell? Oh, Joe, what time is it? Uh, five o'clock. Five o'clock? Oh, I've simply got to go. Well, I guess everybody does if they're closing out. <laughs> yes. You know, you can sure learn a lot in a museum. <laughs> bus stop. It's been a nice afternoon. I, uh, suppose you're probably busy tonight. Oh, yes, I am. Well, thanks a lot for being so nice. Uh, like a cigarette? No, thanks. Oh, you're lighter. Hmm? 
That's one of those things that lights anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it has a shield to keep the flame from blowing out, see? Mm Mm-hmm. Would... Would you like it? Oh, no, you keep it. Oh, take it. I really wouldn't have any use for it. Well, I I just wanted you to have it. Oh. Well, thank you so much. Here comes my bus. Yeah. Well, uh... Maybe we'll meet again sometime. Maybe. 79 Street. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. And and thanks for the lighter. Oh, that's all right. Uh, Let's go, lady. Goodbye. Uh, Goodbye, Alice. 82nd, next. 82nd. Fairs, please. Alice. 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 I think that soldier's calling to you, young woman. I'm sorry. Uh, What what is it? Alice. Joe? Alice. He's coming after the bus. Something wrong? I I don't think so. Joe? Alice. Would you break that thing tonight? (laughs) Yes. Well, I think you. I I don't know. What? Uh, Under the clock. What clock? Uh, under the clock at the Astro Hotel. Where? Under the clock at the Astro at seven. What? Under the clock at the Astro at seven. <laughs> oh, I saw it before. My gosh, Alice, where have you been? I'm a little late, I guess. Freddie's called up every ten minutes. He says you have a date with him. Yes, I have. Well, I've got to get going. I'm supposed to meet Bill. Have a good time. Al, uh, what happened to you? Well, nothing. I met a soldier. Oh, now you're not trying to tell me you got picked up by a uniform. Picked up? <laughs> really, Helen. What's that you've got? That's a cigarette lighter. Where did you get it? He gave it to me. Uh-huh. What else happened, Alice? Nothing. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess it's all right as long as you got rid of him. Well, I didn't exactly get rid of him. What? I got a date with him tonight. Good grief, Al. You don't even know the man. Well, as far as he's concerned, this is just a pickup. Helen, I wish you wouldn't keep saying that. He was a nice boy. He's just lonesome, that's all. Mm -hmm. So it's Joe already. Joe what? Joe. Oh, you don't even know. Oh, look, Al, I don't want to butt in, but it just doesn't make sense to pick up a... To make friends with a stray soldier. I know they're all swell kids, but a girl's got to look out for herself. You're going to use this pin tonight? Oh, here, you can wear it. Thanks. It's different when you meet a serviceman through friends and you know who he is. Now, listen, Alice, you've never done anything like this before, and I'm not going to let you do it now. I'm just not going to let you do it. He'll be waiting. She's going to be awfully disappointed. Oh, honey, he won't feel half as bad as you'll feel after his leave is over and he goes back to camp. Well, you're right. I am right. Anyway, Freddie will be phoning. Oh, Freddie. At least you know his last name. Remember what I said now, I'll. I'll remember. Night, Helen. Night. Hello? Oh, hello, Freddie. Yes, Helen told me you called. Well, I, I'm almost ready right now. Half hour will be fine. Yes, please. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yes? Say, is there any other clock here except this one? Meeting somebody? Yeah. Well, this is the clock, all right. This is where everybody meets. Well, maybe it's a little fast, huh? Uh, let me see. No, right on the nose. Exactly 20 and a half minutes after 7. Oh, well, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, there you are. Am I late? Alice. Oh, no. Oh, hiya, darling. Oh, hey, you excuse look me. Cute. Oh, here. Uh, darling, it's lovely. Yeah, for your hair. Here, hold my mirror. All right. How's this? Well, that's fine. Now, how do you like it? Oh, well. Well, come on. Let's hurry. Something we can do for you, Corporal? Uh, I'd like a, a gardenia, please. Yes, sir. Put it in a box? No, paper will be fine. Be careful of the pin. That'll be one dollar. Oh, uh, do you happen to have the right time? That clock in the lobby's always right. See, it's a quarter of eight. Oh, yeah. You're late, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry, Corporal. The gardenia will do the trick. Yeah. Oh, your money. Here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Alice! I'm sorry, I'm late terribly sorry, but some people called. 
call just as I was ready. Oh, no, no, no. You're, you're not late. I was, I was just worried about you. Oh, here. Here's something for your hair. Oh, Joe. Uh, want me to hold your mirror for you? Oh, please. Uh, how'd you know I like gardenias? Oh, I just took a chance. <laughs> Am I holding the mirror right? Right. Just a second, now. There. Oh, you're beautiful, Kate. Let's go, Alan. <laughs> Still hungry, Joe? No, I feel fine. I'm sure glad you picked this restaurant. Why'd you pick a tank? I've never been here before, either. Alice, you started to tell me about Helen. Oh, well, I was just going to say that we work in the same office. She's in the sales division. Bill says she's practically an executive. Who's Bill? Uh, he's a friend of Helen. Sometimes Freddie and I go out with him. Uh-huh. You like it, don't you? The city and the office and everything? I love it. I've never wanted any different. Never? Mm-mm. Well, don't you want to settle down someday, maybe? Oh, that. Well, not for a long time, anyway. Well, what about this uh, Freddie that you mentioned? Freddie? Mm-hmm. What about him? Well, what about him? Well, does that suit Freddy? I don't think I care to answer that. Well, uh, I'm, I was only asking. My goodness, I hardly know you. I don't have to answer anybody's questions about Freddy or anything else. Well, wait a minute now. This Freddy doesn't mean all anything right, to me. All right, then let's leave him out. Well, I was only asking. I don't know why you had to bring him up at Look, all. Look, you brought him up. I never even heard of the guy. I think maybe I'd better go. What are you doing? Your coat. You've got ice cream all over your sleeve. Oh. Helen was right. She told me what would happen. Look, I, I'm sorry. I had if any I sense said... I'd have listened to her. Different when, when you meet a service man through friends, you know who he is. Then, then you know who he is. Only sometimes when a girl dates with a soldier, she isn't only thinking of herself. She knows he's far away from home and alone, no one to talk to. And... What are you staring at? You've got brown eyes. Look, I... I want... I, I think... Oh, let's go someplace else. Funny, isn't it? Here we are in the park again. Except it's night. And it's a different park. Oh. That's the river down there. Oh, I've been talking so much I hardly noticed. Look, so many stars. Yeah, but that's only a few of them. I know. It's all you ever see. Just a little part where you are. And they're the ones we know up there. Vega and Orion. Big Dipper. I never knew their names. And all the people in this city, all around us, all the people in the country, all the people in the, in the world, out of all that, just those stars, it's Big Dipper and what you said. And you and I down here in this park together. It's strange, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem strange anymore. Suppose we hadn't met. We couldn't not have met. I know. It's strange, though, my coming home early from the country. Well, that was only a little part of it. And your being there in the station. And that was part of it, too. There were other things, like your leaving home, my getting leave just when I did. That's all part of it. Even those ships in the river. Ships? Mm-hmm. They're part of a convoy. That's why I got this lead. Guess it'll be the last one I'll get. I see. Lots of things, isn't it? And some don't matter and others do. Well, they all matter. This night, being together. Yes. Yeah. They matter, don't they? I don't know. Alice. Oh, Joe, I don't know. quiet here. Almost as quiet as it is out home. It's never quiet, really. The city's full of sound, always underneath. Joe. 
Alice. Your hair, it's like... It's like... It's late. We have to go. Yeah. Alice, could I see you again tomorrow? I don't know, Joe. It'll be my last night. I just have today and tomorrow. I, I don't know whether we ought to see each other again at all. Well, I thought maybe you'd want to. Well, I do, but I... I just can't think right now. I'm sorry, Joe. Well, that's all right, Alice. That's all right. In just a minute, we'll bring you the second act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. God Bless America, truly one of our greatest songs of patriotism and national love. Yet it was written by a Russian named Israel Balin, better known to us perhaps as Irving Berlin. It would be almost impossible to enumerate Berlin's musical accomplishments. They run the gamut from tongue-in-cheek, such as This is the Army, Mr. Jones, to Heart on Sleeve, as Say It Isn't So. There's the nostalgia of White Christmas, the sheer joy of I've Got the Sun in the Morning, and the soul-stirring beauty of the music which Berlin wrote to the words on the Statue of Liberty, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor. Irving Berlin is a man who left the land of his birth in search of religious freedom, and finding it, repaid his adopted land with that most generous of gifts, the fruits of his boundless talent. The bounties of Berlin have become indeed a part of the bounties of America. Here's Mr. Keeley with our next act. We continue with Act Two of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. <laughs> Only a few moments have passed since Alice and Joe walked slowly and silently out of the park to Alice's bus stop. But in those few moments, midnight has come and gone. And so has Alice's bus. We can take a taxi cab, Alice. Yeah, that'll be awfully expensive. Oh, that's all right. Well, here comes one now. Hey, a uh, taxi! Oh, that's not a taxi. Is it? No, no, it's a milk truck. Oh. <laughs> Something I can do for you? Oh, well, we uh, thought you were a taxi. Oh, you want a lift? Plenty of room. Got a radio, too. Hear it? Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you. Come on, help me, help me. We're sure we're not crowding you. Ah, plenty of room. You going home from somewhere? Yes. From somewhere. Oh, that's good. I'm just starting out. And here's our next request number. This time from Miss Nellie Green. Nellie Green, that dame again. Nellie is the premier of that huge, that fresh for rubber, and Schrager's all nice for his back. Discrimination, and I'll get a load of what you want to know. Alice's request is sweet and lovely. That's her second request this week. I had a request now for three months, so I get it No, Miss Nellie Green. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's your request? That's how I need you. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, just need stuff. I got, well, I got to worry about me, stuff. Like the summer, I need the sunshine. Hey, you ever seen a motorcycle wagon? 
Something else, Walter? Oh, it's a very interesting sight if you've never seen it. Oh, well, that's awfully nice, but I think I'd better get home. Where'd you live? On the east side. Oh, I could take you right back up there. Well, honestly, Mr. Walter, I'm going to get home. Henry, Al Henry. Okay. Uh, you get directions to the ride, I get the car. Well, I'll be back in about an hour. Well, that's awfully nice, but I think I'd better get home. Where'd you live? On the east side. Oh, I could take you right back up there. Well, honestly, Mr. Henry. Well, I sort of like it here. Uh, the way they load up the truck, that's something very few people know about. All they care about is where is the roof when they open the door. I certainly enjoyed watching them load the trucks, Al. <laughs> sure. I knew you'd enjoy it. Are we going up town now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hey, uh, turn up the radio, huh? Not mine again. <laughs> Maybe they played it when you weren't listening. What's that? Uh-oh. Oh, flat tie, I'll bet. Oh, I'll take a look. Did you have a spare? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a flat, all right. Oh, no. Uh, I gotta find a phone. Service car, come right out and say, well, it's a lunch wagon across the street. Oh, that'll do. Come on, let's go. Well, I, uh, I got him okay. They'll be right over with the service car. A milkman, a soldier, a lady. We ordered you some coffee. Oh, that's nice, thanks. Nice. And you can even hear your program, listen. Oh, yeah. I have seen the most solemn and uncanny conduct in the place. The whole country is going to dissolve. So, hey, you. Huh? Hey, you, Jack. Put down that coffee a minute. What's the matter with you? You just made an unkind remark about dogs. Now, who said anything about dogs? Yeah. Huh? What's the matter with dogs? Now, wait a minute. Oh, well... Oh, how do you do? A pleasure to meet a member of the armed forces. But this civilian, this un-American, the most un-American colored bully meets this Bunker Hill, the Constitution of the United States of our Bill of Rights. Now, now, wait a minute, bud. Wait a minute. I never said... Here's a request for that, how I need you. What was that, pal? Right down with you. That's my number. The request is from my old pal, Al Henry, the man with a million milk bottles. My request. Oh, your request. Uh, well, I've got a request, too. This country has got to expand. You hear me? Expand. Expand. Ow. Oh, now look what you've done. Well, what did I do? You threw your arms out like this and you socked them right in the eye. Well, are you hurt? Oh, pal, speak to me. Forgive me, will you, pal? Oh, we better get him out of here, Alice. Right there, will do it. Get up, pal. Listen to the music. I, I got One song I, like that, and you can take the rest of it and keep it. Oh. Hey, 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 where's my pal? They're taking my pal away. You see what I mean? That's the whole stuff with the stuff of it. Oh, hey, what's going on here, huh? What's going on? Huh? How do you feel? Oh, I'm fine, fine. Well, the man fixed the tire, and Joe's driving us uptown. You've been uh, having a nap. Hey, I got milk to deliver. Oh, why don't you rest, Al? We can, you can tell us where the milk goes, and Joe and I'll deliver it. Oh, no, I couldn't do nothing like that. Well, we'll see how you feel when we get uptown. Oh, he caught me right in the wind. The eye, too. You've got a few. Oh, boy, sure feels like it. And I missed me song. I missed the whole number. <laughs> What do I do, Alice? Stay on the same street? Mm-hmm. Gosh, I'm tired. How's Al doing back there? <laughs> he sounds asleep. You know what he said? He said you and I were natural-born milkmen. That's because we brought back the empties when we delivered the milk. Looks getting light, Joe. It's almost morning. Mm-hmm. Back home, I used to see the dawn come up sometime. Yeah, me too. Up over the Indiana field. The morning comes here first, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Before that, out at sea. Before that, Joe. Hmm? Where are they sending you, do you know? No. England, I guess. Long ways away. Alice? Hmm? Do you like me a little bit? Oh, why don't you doze off then? I'll find a way, okay? Really? Sure. Good night, Joe. Good night, baby. What do you think of these kids, Mama? 
After I get knocked out practically cold, like I tell you, they deliver me whole route and bring me home. I think that's about the nicest thing I ever heard. Well, I, I guess we'll be going along. Going along? Why, breakfast is all ready. Oh, no, really, we could. Never oh. tasted cooking like Mama's in all your life. Why, she can mix you up the finest glass of ice water you ever drunk. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, but kidding aside, no, no, she makes the best corn cakes you ever had. Come on, now, you better sit down. They're all ready, too. Well, watch yourself now. They're hot. Say, um... Uh, you folks married? Oh, oh no. Uh, lots of young folks get married these days. Butter one of these while it's hot, Al. Oh, thanks. Oh, hot well, is right. <laughs> I, I think you have to know somebody a long time before you get married. I mean, you don't want to do something as serious as that just in a minute. Well, me, I think you can find out as much about somebody in a minute as you can in a whole lifetime. You know what she was doing when I first seen her? Now, Al. No, no. No. Cooking butter cakes in child's window. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> and the minute I seen her, I knew she was for me. I don't know, though. I I don't think it's fair to the girl, a soldier, to getting married. Well, how does he know what condition he'll come back in? Well, Joe, if people ever thought about all the things that could happen, they'd never do anything. Well, I think if a girl and a boy want to get married, all the talk in the world ain't going to stop them. Never has yet. And it... Uh, uh, Al! What's the matter? Get away from the muffin. Company first. <laughs> well, look, they got some, ain't they? Just yeah. exactly like his uncle. Those Henrys. It isn't me uncle, it's me cousin, oh. Michael Henry. He's a clerk of the court for Judge Ford. Well, your uncle, your cousin, what difference does it make? <laughs> well, it's me cousin is the one that can eat. <laughs> well, I never saw such eating. <laughs> and I never saw such a place in my life as this just trying to get something to eat. All right, here, take the muffin. Take yes, it. All right, I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You like riding in the subway, Joe? Well, it sure is different, all right. They go so fast. Is that what you've been thinking about for the last five minutes? Yes, no, I was thinking about Al Henry and his wife. They're lovely people. I was thinking about what he said. About how it really doesn't matter how long a person knows one another. No, I, I, I guess it doesn't matter so much. And what have you been thinking about? Something you said. About a soldier not marrying because he doesn't know what condition he'll come back in. Oh. Well, I think if two people are really in love, that wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't it? Of course I... Oh, Joe. Joe, I don't want to leave you today. Alice, could you... What, what about your office? I, I suppose I could find some excuse. Oh, oh that, that'd be wonderful, Alice. Joe, hurry this way. We have to change trains. Boy, this mob, even worse than Penn Station. <laughs> You're not half as confused as I was my first time in the subway. I'll just hang on to you. Right. What were you saying about the office? Well, it won't take long, and you can wait outside. Oh, that's swell. Look, here comes our train, Joe. Grand Central Station, West Side. Oh, let them off, please. Let them off. All right, step lively, everybody. All the way in. Come on, there. come on, Joe. Yeah, step lively, everybody. All I'm the way coming, in. I'm coming, Alice. Wait inside there. Uh, all the way in, folks. Step lively. Joe. Watch for the step there. Come on, Alice. Alice. All the way in. Alice, that's all. Watch the doors now. That's all. Wait a minute. I've got to get on there. No, you don't. Next Train, I, I gotta get on, man. Please, can you tell me what the next station is, mister? Uh, no English, or no English. Uh, lady, could you tell me what the next station is? The next station? Now, let me see. This is Grand Central, and I'm sure the next station would be... No, no, it wouldn't be that. Now, if this is Grand Next station? Sure, bud. 14th Street. 14th Street. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, mister, mister. Yeah? Uh, I I've been looking all over for a girl. Did you see a girl get off the train here a little while ago? I've seen a thousand girls get off, fella. Well, is this the next stop after Grand Central? The next express stop, yeah. You mean there's something else? Sure, the local after Grand Central, a local stop to 30 days. How do I get there? Take the stairway at the end of the platform and go across. Stairway into the platform. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. Oh, here. I want to tell you something about this city of New York. Oh. Any of you been here before? No, I've never been 
It's a big place, boys. Population 7,454,995. I beg your pardon. Yes, ma'am. Is, is there someone in charge I could see, please? Oh, uh, there's a receptionist, miss. Over there. Thank you. Now, take the subway. Right there. Uh, excuse me, I... I'm looking for a soldier. I thought maybe he'd come here to the USO. Any particular soldier? My friend. We got separated in the subway. I I've been looking all over for him. Well, what's his name? Joe. Joe what? I don't know. Well, that's a big help. Or is this a joke? Oh, no, please. I... We, we only just met yesterday, and... I don't know. It didn't seem to make any difference what his name was. Oh, it didn't make any difference. I, I know it sounds funny, but, but the night went by so fast, and I got sleepy, and then we lost each other this morning, and he's only got today. I don't see how I can help the young lady, and I don't think I'd go around telling that story either. Oh, you don't understand. I've got to find him. I... One of my... What am I going to do? In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. One of the great things about our way of government is that if one part starts getting too powerful or begins to use its power wrongly, another part can say, hold it, man. That's putting it bluntly, but it is an idea of one way Congress works. In the legislature, there are rules for procedure and rules to keep the rules from being abused like the way the filibuster and cloture rules apply to Congress. The filibuster is the exercise of the privilege of unlimited debate. That means, once he has the floor, a senator or representative may speak for as long as he cares to. If this occurs, others who wish to vote on the bill may invoke cloture, which ends all debate, so voting may begin. Cloture is possible with a two-thirds vote. It's like saying, we've heard enough talk, now let's see what the majority wants. Then, democracy really begins to work. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. In the bewildering puzzle of city streets, swirling with a flood of alien faces, Joe and Alice have searched hopelessly for each other. Their hearts gripped with a realization, terrible and absurd, that they will never meet again. Not knowing where else to turn, Joe wearily makes his way to the Pennsylvania station. Can I get train information here? Uh, what do you want to know, son? Next train for Aberdeen, Maryland. Aberdeen? Yeah. Mm, 147. Going back to camp? That's right. Uh, track 14. Thank you. Uh, help you, lady. Excuse me, please. Sorry. I beg your pardon. Oh, um, officer, could you tell me how I can... Alice. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Alice! 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 Oh. Alice! Oh, Joe, I, I thought you were lost. I didn't know where to look. Quick, quick, what's your name? Mayberry. Oh, Joe. Mayberry. I, I didn't know where to find you. I didn't think I'd ever find you again. Mayberry. Oh, oh, look, Alice, we can't wait. We mustn't. It wouldn't be right. Oh, Joe, are you sure? Don't you see? We might never have found one another again. No, 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 don't say that. I've got to say it. Look, please, please, will you marry me? Oh, yes, Joe, yes. Gosh, I don't think the marriage license bureau would be this busy, did you? I guess all we can do is sit here and wait our turn. Oh, That's the blood test papers, everybody. That's the blood test papers. What's that, Joe? I don't know. 
Oh, uh, mister? Yes? Mister, what's that about blood test papers? Uh, going to law applicants for a marriage license must have a blood test certificate. Well, we didn't know when. Where do we get one? Uh, 67 Whitehall Street. Tell them Mr. Swartz sent you. Be quiet, please. Quiet. Two subway stops downtown. All right, Irving, who's next? How long are you open here? Until uh, 4 o'clock. You'll have to hurry, Joe. I can find it. Everybody got your blood test papers. That's your thank you, thank you, thank you. Where do you think you're going? Well, we're looking for the blood test. You got a pass? Well, no, we were told this was a place. You can't go upstairs without a pass. Well, where do we get a pass? Lieutenant Ruffle, second floor, but you can't go up without a pass. Now, take a seat over there. Who does he think he is? Hey, wait a minute. You still getting married? Yeah. Well, why don't you say so? Here, use this pass. Oh, room 318. Thanks, thanks. All right, you know, fixed up all right? No. Now, what's the matter? You're too busy. We couldn't get the papers till tomorrow. We had to get them by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, why don't you go to a private laboratory? What do you mean? Well, you can go to one of the approved labs and get the results in an hour or so. I got a list somewhere. Oh, please, please. Yeah, yeah, here's one. The L&N Public Health Service Laboratory, 631 Canal Street. 631 Canal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, we're Alan and Mayberry. Here we are. Your blood test papers? Here, right here. I just have to stamp it. Here you are. Silver. Joan. Joan, look what she stamped on it. Not valid for 72 hours. Not valid for 72 hours. There's just one thing you can do. A judge of the Supreme Court may issue a waiver of the time clause. Uh, a little quiet, if you please. Permitting the parties to get married at once. Supreme Court judge. We can try, Joe. We can try. A waiver? Oh, but you're too late, folks. Too late? Yeah, I'm sorry, but the judge has just left. Oh, no. Oh, uh, excuse me, but... This name on the desk. Are you Michael Henry? Yeah. Then you're Al Henry's cousin. He told us about you. Well, why didn't you tell me? Say, maybe I can catch the judge after all. Oh, uh, how is Al? Uh, he's fine. And him? Uh, she's fine, too. Oh, that's fine. Uh, look, don't you think you better hurry? Oh, I will. Just make yourself comfortable. Joe. Joe, look at the time. Oh, tried so hard. So hard. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Schwartz, wait a minute, Mr. Schwartz. Elevator going down. Yes? Well, we got the waiver, and here's our license, so can't we get married? Oh, you're the young couple who, uh... Well, they, 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 they told us your office was closed. Going down. Well, I got through a little early. Just have time to catch the 4.30. Sorry. Oh, please, it isn't 4 o'clock yet. Make up your mind, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, come along. You can marry us, can't you? Oh, yes, we have a little chapel, potted plants, and a few ferns. Oh, that's nice. Irving! Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, look me up another train. It's not 4 o'clock yet. Bernie! Bernie! Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Turn the vacuum cleaner off. Don't you see there's a wedding? What do you think? This is a factory? No. And stand back there. Now, let's see, young man. Yes. The young lady should be on the left. Oh, yes. Stay here, Bernie. We need witnesses. Sure. I'll stay. Now, your certificate, please. This is a serious and solemn step you hereby undertake. Do either of you know of any reason why you both should not be legally joined in marriage? Uh, then do you, uh, Joseph Allen, take this woman as your lawful wedded wife? You promise to love, honor, comfort, and cherish her forever. I'll say I do. No, I, 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 I do. There's a train out there I couldn't hear. Do you, Alice Mayberry, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? You promise to love, honor, comfort, and cherish her forever. I do. Place the ring upon the bride's finger. I haven't got a ring. Under the law, it isn't necessary to have a ring. No, I didn't know. The floors can be waxed later, please. For as you both have consented to wedlock, I do, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the law of the state of New York, now pronounce you husband and wife. And may God bless your union. Here's your certificate. Oh, thank you. Hey, boss, there's a 440 train. That's Sunday, stupid. Look up weekdays. Oh, good luck, Mr. and Mrs. Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, lady and mister. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I... I didn't have any flowers. Oh, no. Well, we, we didn't have time. We rushed, so. Well, I... I guess they want to finish cleaning up in here. Well, 
We made it, Joe. It's just four o'clock. This sure isn't much of a honeymoon. Just sitting in the park. Joe, are your mother and father living? Uh-huh. Are, are you? Oh, yes. Yes, they're, they're living. Uh, do you suppose I should write your folks, maybe? Oh, I suppose so. I suppose I should write to yours. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, would you like to see our house? I have a snapshot in my wallet. Here. Oh, that's nice. That's my mother. You suppose she'll like me? Oh, sure she will. I should say so. Joe, wh what time does your train go? Well, uh, I, I don't have to be back in camp till tomorrow noon. Alice? What? I guess you're not very glad you married me, are you, Alice? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I, I guess I just don't feel very married. Oh, I know. I, I don't blame you. I mean, it wasn't your fault. It was just that it was so... I, I know. So ugly. I know, honey. It wasn't... I know. I, it's all right, darling. <laughs> Right. Feel better, darling? I'm all right now. I'm sorry, Joe. I've been looking across the street there. Somebody else just got married, too. They just came out of that church, see? Oh, Joe, I'd like to go into the church, Joe. Please. Well, I want to go into the church, too. I don't think you'll mind. Dinner was satisfactory. Oh, everything was fine, fine. Oh, uh, here. Thank you, sir. Dinner in our own room in the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> oh, I guess I can afford it for one night. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a half a night, darling. It's after midnight. Yeah, I know. I've got an hour to get to the station. Oh, Alice. How can I say it? How can I tell you everything I want to tell you? How much I love you, how I think about you every, every minute, every day, how... Alice. Alice, try 
Will you, will you try not to worry about anything when I'm... Joe, darling. You're coming back. You want me to tell you how I know? Two days ago, you came to the city and you didn't know anyone. You didn't know me and I didn't know you. And now we're married. And, and we both know that that was meant to be. So don't you see who... Whoever makes the arrangements for people is doing pretty well for us. That's all we need to know. Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, leaving on track four. Follow up, please. It's down this way, darling. <laughs> Still showing me my way around. <laughs> Are you sure you can't send me your laundry? Oh, Ma, don't worry about those things. I'm in the Navy. Uh, are you sure you got everything straight now, honey? Oh, I won't forget, guys. Remember, the insurance in the car runs out. Well, that's something we don't have to worry about yet. Hello, soldier. Where, where are you going? Hiya, Skipper. Oh, I'm just going away. I like you. Well, thanks, I like you, too. <laughs> you see, honey, I told you kids like me, they hardly ever kick me in the shit. <laughs> Just once in a while, darling. This is it, Joe. Yeah. Tickets, please. Show your tickets, please. Goodbye, darling. Take good care of yourself. Don't forget to write. Oh, no, no, I won't. I love you. Uh, see you soon. See you soon. A Navy lieutenant named Franz found himself with time on his hands. An insatiable reader, he soon became leader, while others remained also Rands. What have you done about your education? Good night. Good night. Good night. You gave us a delightful hour with a clock. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service.